Hi, I'm Dr. Alan Mendelson. Today I'd like to talk about maintaining macular health. The reason it's an important topic is, of course, what we want to do is prevent macular degeneration. Why is this important? Because unfortunately, macular degeneration is the number one cause of blindness in the United States. So what exactly am I talking about? Pretend that the palm of my hand is your entire retina. The very central 5% of the retina is called the macula. When you're driving, you actually use the macula for good sharp vision. Desk work, paperwork, you're using the macula, good sharp vision. If you're even just relaxing, watching a show on television, macula, good sharp vision. The remaining 95% of the retina is our peripheral vision. So the macula is obviously crucial that if the macula deteriorates with macular degeneration and slips downhill, then our ability to drive, to read, desk work, paperwork slips downhill, and it can be devastating. So there are hundreds upon hundreds of articles on different ways to try to prevent macular degeneration. Among the hundreds of articles, to me, there are five take-home messages, and that's what I'd like to cover and impart to try to greatly decrease and hopefully prevent macular degeneration. So of the issues, the number one most important is, number one is refrain from smoking. Now for those who smoke, I know it's really, really tough to try to stop smoking. Why is it important to try to stop smoking? One word, and that word is carboxyhemoglobin. I know it's a big word, basically the story is simple. If someone does not smoke, their carboxyhemoglobin level is negligible. But those who do smoke, it increases 10 times, 15 times that of a non-smoker. So I just mentioned how the macula is so very important. There are capillaries supplying oxygen and nutrients to the macula. The problem is that elevated carboxyhemoglobin level essentially, unwittingly, what the smoker's doing is they're strangulating themselves. With that strangulation, it creates hypoxia, lack of oxygen, and the macula takes a, a big hit downhill. So with that increased carboxyhemoglobin level, of course, cigarettes is the bad thing, but there are billion dollar industries saying, well, some of the alternatives aren't so bad. Well, the reality is really cigars, same category. Now, maybe relative risks, the e-cigarettes or vaping, may be less of a risk, but there's still definite risks. And then fat, lastly, no hookah. So I want to talk about that for a minute. And the reason is, throughout high school kids, and especially college campuses, there's a proliferation of hookah smoking. Now, the industry portrays it as clean fun, and clean fun in a social setting. And so it sounds like a great idea. What people don't know is, and what one should ask the emergency medicine physicians of the country, is our collegiates smoking hookah fairly often, there's something called carbon monoxide poisoning. The kids end up in the emergency room. They end up in the urgent care center. And unfortunately, as the emergency medicines and physicians will tell you, there's fatalities every year from smoking hookah. So that's the terrible thing, but that's not clean, safe fun. But also for the eyes, the eyes take a hit as well. So all of these things, they're billion dollar industries promoting alternatives, but the truth is please, please, please try not to participate in any of the above. So number two thing that we can do, sunglasses with UV 400 blocker and polarization. If you have a chance, just jot down, because I'm going to come back to why it's so important. UV 400 blocker, polarization. So what's the issue? It's a maze out there. Those who are trying to protect their eyes, there's a maze because it is very difficult. There's a lot of ambiguous things. So what's going on is, up north, the amount of ultraviolet exposure is fairly low. But here in South Florida, it's considerably higher. That UV exposure causes a lot of things from eyelid cancers to pinguaculas to pterygium. 
for today's topic being macular degeneration, there's a definite increased incidence from the ultraviolet sun exposure. So researchers agree readily, having sunglass protection is really, really important. It should be a simple thing, but again, it's tricky. So I have a few suggestions. So first of all, why is it tricky? Pretend that this, right, this palm of my hand is zero nanometers, and this palm is 400. From zero to 400 nanometers is the ultraviolet light exposure. Ideally, we want to block all 400. So what happens when you go to get sunglasses at the mall, at a kiosk, at a, your favorite store? Many sunglasses, in fact, the vast majority, have no ultraviolet protection. But then you'll come across some that say, hey, we have UV protection. Some sound even better. They say we have 100% UV protection. It's not fair to you when you're going to buy your sunglasses, but the tricky thing is 100%, 100% of what? If you go on the website and look in the very small print, it'll say we have 100% protection of UVA. Well, I just mentioned you want to block from zero to 400. UVA is only 320 to 400. So if you're only blocking 100% of UVA, you're actually only blocking 20% of what you really want to be blocking. That itself is a problem. There's another issue in, I have a pair of clip-on sunglasses. Clip-ons, of course, why do people wear them? You have your regular lenses, then it's convenient, you just clip on for the protection. Let's take these clip-ons, though. They have 100% protection. These specific clip-ons, you look at the website, it's 20%. It's only UVA. Now, if, these, if the person is looking at the camera, pretend the camera is the sun. Ideally, you have 20% protection, not 100. But worse yet, what happens if the sun's there, person's walking the opposite direction, going for a walk, chatting with neighbors, at a barbecue, looking away from the sun? The back of this lens has no protection whatsoever. So most of the time, looking any other way, there's no protection. When the individual's looking at the sun or close to the sun, they have 20% protection. That's not what you really want for, to protect the eyes against macular degeneration. So the same concept applies. The vast majority of sunglasses, while they're not clip-ons, they're going to be through and through like these sunglasses. But what happens is they're predicated, built the same concept. They only have protection in the front. You want protection in the front and the back of the lens because who just sits out there staring at the sun? We're going in every which way. So the bottom line is this. With sunglasses, what you want is UV 400 blocker, polarization, front and back protection. Now that we've covered sunglasses in detail, let me move on to topic number three, probably third most of importance, and that is to take ARIDS II vitamin supplementation. Now, there are television commercials every single day touting the values of ARIDS II. You're probably wondering, what's this all about? Well, what happened is there's a landmark study called ARIDS. What that is is age-related eye disease study. Basically, it's landmark research into macular degeneration started about the year 2000, 2001. So they have isolated very, very important supplemental ingredients to help keep the macula healthy. So right now, the formulation is called ARIDS-2. And actually, ARIDS-2 has six components, and exactly six, no more, no less. Vitamin C, vitamin E, zinc, copper, lutein, and zeaxanthin. Those six things have been found to be paramount importance to keep the macula healthy. So how do we get these ingredients? One option is to take food items with these six ingredients. For more information about that and specifics, you can go to the website www.myeyesurgeons.com and there's two options. One option is you can actually download a list with these six ingredients and the food items that one should take. But another option is to actually take the ARIDS-2 vitamins. 
Now, all the researchers clearly say if anyone has any sign of macular degeneration, it's an absolute no-brainer to take the ARIDS-2. The difficult controversy is what happens to someone like myself? Thank God I have no sign of macular degeneration. I have no drusen. Most ophthalmologists, because of the compelling research, even with no sign of macular degeneration, they themselves take the vitamins, so I do. I take the ARIDS-2 vitamin twice a day, every day. I view it, the research is just so compelling about the preventative nature, but it has those six ingredients. So again, if you want more information about the food items, if you're philosophically opposed to taking vitamins, or if you take a lot of vitamins, and you want to cross-reference to see if there are any potholes in your coverage, if you go to the website, there's a lot of information, and you can download it. So the question I'm frequently asked is, well, what happened to carrots? Mom, Dad, everyone always said, eat your carrots, eat your carrots, eat your carrots. What's in carrots? Beta carotene. Beta carotene actually is helpful, but the researchers found there's a problem. If somebody smokes, but even in former smokers, taking elevated quantities of beta carotene in the vitamins increases the incidence of lung cancer. Some research suggests that even possibly in someone who's never smoked, high levels of beta carotene might increase lung cancer, but for sure we know in smokers and former smokers, so the first generation of ARIDS vitamin, they actually had the beta carotene. Now the second generation does not, because obviously you don't want, God forbid, to push someone into a, a lung cancer. So that's the issue why carrots are no longer being promoted, the, the health of the macular pigment, it's been replaced by the other ingredients. So moving on to number four, you want to increase consumption of alpha omega-3 fatty acid. Many, many, many studies have shown by increasing your content of alpha omega-3 fatty acid, you can reduce the incidence of macular degeneration 25%, 30%, very, very significant. So there's one key way, and I put it in bold print on purpose, salmon. Every single study shows salmon is the absolute rock star. If you have the capability to eat salmon, at least one serving a week, immense benefit. But let's say you're a fish eater and salmon really isn't your cup of tea. There are others that you can eat. Mackerel scores high, herring, snapper, tilapia, they all score highly. Well, what if you're allergic to fish? Or what if you find it very distasteful? This is the tricky one. Fish oil supplements or the alpha omega-3 supplements. So let's go back to that arid study. A lot of research was pushing, especially based on salmon and other things. So we talked about the vitamins having six ingredients. So they analyzed what if you added alpha omega-3 fatty acid as a number seven. Shockingly, they found wasn't helpful, wasn't hurtful. It's neutral, so they did not add it. But all the research clearly shows if you're able to eat fish, that's unquestionably beneficial, and salmon, again, is the superstar. But if you can't eat fish, there are other things, hazelnuts, linseed oil, flaxseed oil, but you don't want to skip out on the alpha omega-3 fatty acid to protect your macula. And the very last is number five, protection from blue light. So what's the story? We talked a few minutes ago, ultraviolet light is going from zero to 400. You want to block all zero to 400. It used to be for decades, most researchers for those who were Star Trek fans, that there was almost like an invisible force field at 400, and then we were relatively safe. Well, research has now found the next door neighbor, which is blue light, also has a lot of harmful effects. So we go blue, green, yellow, orange, red, but the blue light's problematic. We have the blue light exposure from sun, but unfortunately, our desktops, our laptops, our iPads, and even our cell phones have the blue light emission. Now, if you want a lot of information, if you go to the website, again, www.myeyesurgeons.com, two options. You can download printable, which has information about the menace of blue light, but also, if you go to the section about under optical, 
there's a 12-minute video basically standing on one foot, everything you'd ever want to know about blue light and what you can do to prevent the exposure. But the shortened version is when you have a digital device, you just want to move it further away. So for example, if the youngsters are watching a video on the iPad, instead of them parking it under their nose, you want to scoot it back further away. The exposure when it's that close to their face is far greater. So when you're holding your cell phone, scoot it back. Just make the font a little bigger. Push the iPad back. It has a significant decrease in the exposure. So just move the devices back. Number two, glasses. You want something called blue blocker built in. It's easy to do. Now lenses made previously, there was no such thing. But now that we know of the harm of blue blocker, there's something called yellow chromophore pigment. You build it into the lens and it's immensely valuable. And uh, lastly, the sunglasses. The sunglasses that have the UV 400 blocker polarization, which we talked about earlier, just about every single one of them has blue blockers also. So even though it'll sound funny, someone wearing sunglasses, when they're going to be on the computer or on their iPad or watching movies, if they don't have blue blocker, at least push it away, even put on your shades. Now, why are these five things important that we talked about? Because let's say hypothetically, someone's lifetime possibility of developing macular degeneration is that, with these five things, most researchers believe it cuts it down dramatically. And the hope is that it actually brings it down to zero. Thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, again, if you go to the website, you can find further information that I think you'll find very helpful, or you can even download um, information on all the various topics that were presented today. Thank you again.